In this video, I'm going to compare the Sony PMW EX1 broadcast video camera to the brand new Samsung Galaxy S8 smartphone. Will this $6,300 camera look better than this $750 smartphone? Or should I say vice versa? Well, we're gonna find out together. First up, a dynamic range test. Dynamic range is the difference between the brightest and darkest areas of a captured image. Unfortunately, the S8 was overexposed and I should have done several manual exposure levels. Apologies for that. I can say that I'm impressed with the Galaxy S8's range. The Sony EX1 beats it, as evidenced by this side-by-side -side screenshot where the blue sky is retained along with the details in the shadows. Shadow detail is the same, so despite the S8 being overexposed, this shows that the dynamic range on the EX1 is greater, maybe by about a stop or two. For a smartphone, I would be very happy to use it. As for the resolution, the amount of detail captured in an image, the Galaxy S8 impressed me yet again. The reason I'm keeping the screenshot up is to avoid YouTube's bitrate starved compression artifacts. The S8 sharpness is artificially enhanced with edge filtering, which I'm not a fan of. YouTube compression doesn't like fake sharpness either. I would venture to say that if the edge sharpening was reduced, it would look like the EX1, which is really amazing. Unfortunately, the S8 is not without its technical problems. The first thing that I noticed when I loaded the video file into my video editing program, the frame rate. It's not locked like a professional video camera is. That's why you see the ghosting artifacts when I'm panning with the camera because the frame rate is not locked and my video editor is compensating for that. There's also ghosting artifacts and jello because of the electronic and the optical image stabilization. The Galaxy S8's colors are a lot more saturated than the EX1, which can be a good or bad thing. If you don't perform color correction on your video like the typical consumer, it's a good thing. If you do, then it's bad because the canvas, as it were, is not blank for better paint. If I had to guess, it's also out of professional broadcast spec, specifically REC709. A third party app may fix these problems for professional usage, I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments section if such an app exists because I honestly am brand new to smartphone video cameras on the high end. Next up, a field test for resolution. The Galaxy S8 is the winner here. Dynamic range is better, especially in the clouds. In the EX1, you can't see the full clouds and the field, but with the S8, you can. So I don't know if the phone's dynamic range kicked in, like the HDR option. I'm not sure what happened there. I don't know why the dynamic range was better here and not at the park, but whatever. The Sony white balance was more natural, more realistic, but that's because I manually white balanced it and the S8 was automatic white balance. The Sony EX1 also appears noisier despite the gain setting being at zero decibels. The 100% crop of 2160p video also looked pretty good. I doubt it is truly 2160 vertical lines of resolution, but it isn't a complete waste of data to shoot in that mode either. If the camera sensor and lens can truly capture over 2000 pixels of resolution, the bitrate starvation kills the details with blurring and pixelation, sadly enough. Either way though, the S8's resolution is impressive in Full HD 1080p mode or 2160p 4K mode. At 1080p, you can see more individual blades of grass up close, although that may have been because the EX1's focus was set to infinity. To check this, I recorded some additional footage the following day to see how good manually focused grass could look with the EX1. Again, I'm using screen grabs because YouTube's video compression will destroy the footage if I don't. Despite recording more footage, the S8 is still the winner even with detail enhancement turned up on the Sony EX1. That to me is absolutely crazy. 
I would estimate that the S8 is equivalent somewhere between the Sony's plus 10 and plus 20 detail setting. I also tried post-process sharpness to enhance my standard negative five detail setting, but it did not measure up to the S8. The final test was a video codec compression test water, blowing leaves, and a gradient skyline, such as one of those at sunset or sunrise, are some of the toughest things for a video compressor to handle. I was shocked by how nice the water looked on the S8. The skyline exhibited macro blocking, but it really makes me wonder if turning sharpening down would eliminate the problem. Look, I was not attempting to make the EX-1 look bad. In fact, I wanted it to be the clear winner because I did spend 60 to 300 hours on the camera. But the reality is that the smaller 2017 sensor and lens beat the 2007 era sensor and bigger lens. That is crazy. Now the question remains, could the Sony EX-1 do better if I captured off the HD SDI output to a newer video codec instead of the built-in MPEG-2 compression? I don't know. Maybe. However, I would still prefer to shoot with the EX-1 despite the resolution loss for various reasons. That said, I can't deny that at equal focal length and conditions, the S8 sensor resolves better or equally to the Sony. I honestly didn't think that was gonna happen, but it did. And while I won't be replacing my Sony PMW EX1 with the Galaxy S8, I was very happy with what I saw, and in the not too distant future, I'll buy it or the Galaxy S7. I'm still debating which one I wanna get, but I do want to do live streaming, and I do want something that can fit into my pocket and take great pictures, so yeah. I tested the Galaxy S8 against my Nikon DSLR and a couple of other cameras, so click the links on screen to see those other videos if you want to see how the Galaxy S8 performs against other devices.